week two of the vlog. It is Monday, July whatever, 19th. Is it the 19th? Probably. Uh, anyhow, this is week two of the vlog. It's Monday. It is about 1.30 in the afternoon and I am just getting ready to beg some spinach for the farm store. So it is week two of the vlog, but for me, it is week one of Edible Prairie Project's uh, summer veggie basket season. So for the next 10 weeks, we do a veggie basket uh, program. It is pre-sold. Um, this week we have 28 baskets. They will actually go out tomorrow, Tuesday. Um, but today we spent the day, Jordan and I, Jordan is EPP's part-time um, employee. We spent the day picking, washing, packaging, and everything is in the fridge. Um, I had one produce grower drop stuff off yesterday. I had an egg producer drop stuff off today. So we are pretty much ready for week one of veggie baskets. Um, this is extra that we cut. So it will, all the extra goes into the farm store um, so yeah I'm gonna get that bagged up I did I did take some footage of um, harvesting some beet greens packaging making kale bundles so you guys can kind of see like what that process looks like so um, I'm gonna try and do a little bit of gardening stuff here on the vlog with you guys so that you can kind of see more of like what my garden season what that looks like right now so right now because we're in veggie basket season and like we're getting really close to like harvesting a lot of stuff. Um, I'm, I spend a lot of time in this area, <laughs> in the shop. So a lot of time spent here at the harvest table um, or at the sink. So yeah, I'll show you guys a little bit of, you know, what a harvest day for EPP looks like. And I'll do some stuff maybe tomorrow too for Tuesday about what distribution and uh, what like bag packing, basket packing looks like. So we are, it is a CSA style thing. They get six to eight items that we predetermined beforehand based upon availability between what the EPP um, gardens produce and what the other growers and farmers that are part of our program do. So yeah, we're kind of ready to go. I have a spreadsheet to update because we track everything. Um, I have to make sure our producers, all the weights of everything gets um, tracked because we do pay for the produce. We do not ask for donations, we pay for produce. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna finish baking my spinach, go do my office work and get some lunch. So not bad, not bad to be done at 1.30 in the afternoon. So thank you guys for being here for week two of the vlog and we'll see you later this week. to tell you guys what is in this week's basket. So spinach. Um, all right, so spinach, they get a dozen eggs. Everybody's getting a bundle of kale. Uh, beet greens, everybody's getting a bag of beet greens. More kale, we have three bins of kale. Um, mixed green lettuce, so there's four or five different kinds of lettuce in there. So yeah, eggs, spinach, beet greens, kale, lettuce, and then some people are so if we don't have enough of an item, so this is like, we don't have enough. Um, these are from another grower. There's zucchini, there's some bell peppers back there that you can't really see. And then she's got some pickling cucumbers too that she brought to us. So then we do a split. So everybody will get like, they'll get a bell pepper or they'll get a couple of zucchini or they'll get some pickling cucumbers. And then um, once, we get more of those items because you know she'll be harvesting more next week then our and epp might be harvesting some peppers then we'll 
rotate everybody through. So even if they don't get everything on the same week, eventually everybody gets all the same items. So that's, that's what I have to track. So I have to make sure who gets bell peppers this week, who needs bell peppers next week, so on and so forth. So yeah, that's how our veggie basket program works. And they're also getting an herb bundle, which we will put together tomorrow. It's from the North Community Garden. Um, Jordan also helps with the community garden. We purchase items from them. We're gonna pick those tomorrow. Um, I have a few herbs out here but herbs don't like hold super well. So we're gonna harvest them tomorrow, um, right before we do veggie basket distribution. So I'll uh, make sure to include a picture of like what the, the finished veggie basket looks like. Hey guys, just, uh, what is it, it's Tuesday, uh, what day is it? It's uh, Tuesday, man, forget what's going on. It's Tuesday, <laughs> I'm just uh, just wrapping up uh, Tuesday's video, which was hauling water off to the cows. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video and hopefully it's doing well. Um, it's really what we're kind of kind of down to and and uh, I know there's going to be quite a few comments on the video about how we should uh, you know maybe water the fields with those with those big water tanks or whatever else but really um, the most important thing is getting water to the cows and making sure that they're not having any issues um, with water deprivation speaking of deprivation um, some of you guys might have noticed in the video that I have deprived myself of one of my favorite shirts if you noticed in the video um, I was jumping out of the the Mac Actually, uh, it was the part where I'm, I pulled up up on the highway. I had to cross the highway to open the gate. And I jumped out of the Mack truck and I jumped down and the back of my shirt got caught on the door. And this is one of my favorite shirts. This is one of my Johnny Cash shirts. This was from uh, way back when and uh, ended up picking it up and tore the dang thing. So kind of ticks me off just a little bit, but oh well. Um, Aaron actually threw me a replacement shirt. Um, this is a a blonde cow shirt, so I'm just going to throw that on really quick. So that we can keep on rolling. Blonde cow, by the way, today made it into the Gillette News Record. She was actually on the front page of the News Record. Here's a quick shot of that uh, of that the issue of the paper. Uh, kind of an interesting thing. Um, the news record had done an article on us probably three or four years ago, three years ago maybe. Um, I think we had about 10,000 subscribers at that point. And they had done a quick article uh, on Sunday actually about us on a, a Sunday three years ago. And uh, this was kind of like their follow-up to that and, and kind of show how we've grown. And, and they actually talked to some other social media people who live in and around the Gillette area. Um, a fisherman for one and uh, so it was kind of cool, kind of a cool little, uh, kind of a cool little deal. And of course, uh, Blonde Cow um, being on the shirt as well as uh, on the front page of the paper. So her, her street cred goes up quite a bit. These shirts actually are available on the, uh, on the Our Wyoming Life website. Uh, you, can, you can grab them there also. So the other interesting thing about shirts is the fact that I didn't really anticipate, um, you know, how many shirts I would need. I, I kind of thought about this when we were talking about doing the vlog and I kind of looked at it as kind of like a vain, shallow thing that I shouldn't worry about. But I don't own that many t-shirts. I own a lot of black t-shirts, uh, but um, I don't own that many different like different t-shirts that aren't our Wyoming Life t-shirts. So um, so I kind of started thinking as, an, as, as, as I was doing the weekly vlog, I was like, uh, I'm going to end up wearing the same shirt twice in one week or at least in back-to-back -back weeks and somebody's going to notice it. So I'm going to put this offer out there. If you would like to see uh, one of your t-shirts, whether it's a company t-shirt or you have just a favorite t-shirt that you like um, and that you can get me an extra one of them or you can uh, you can send me one in a size large, uh, then I will uh, work on wearing them. I have uh, some shirts from different ranches and stuff like that um, that, that have been sent to me uh, that I've been able to, to wear into videos. I've have some uh, shirts from where people live, their their cities, you know, like Duluth, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I have some of those shirts and I'd be happy to wear those in videos and of course, uh, and give you guys credit uh, where credit is due. So if you'd like to send us a shirt, you can send it to this address right here and uh, we will uh, we'll get them uh, on my back.
to wear during the vlog. So that's it. Uh, congratulations to Blonde Cow. She made it on the front page of the paper and she is going to be demanding more cake as we speak. Uh, we have uh, we put a quick post about it on Facebook. You can check that out at uh, facebook.com slash rwyomonglife. Be sure to follow us there as well as subscribe to this channel. Do it. Do it now. We'll see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, it is Tuesday evening and I've just finished up veggie basket distribution. So 28 baskets full of veggies went out. Um, it was a bit chaotic. It was, it's super hot. So we set up inside um, and said I normally would do it outside. So I didn't take any video. I did take a couple pictures so you guys can see what the finished baskets look like. You can see kind of how we um, put them together and the we actually use laundry baskets to put all the produce in. We're assi Everybody's assigned a number. Um, we have a check-in sheet and then yeah Jordan tells me which number it is. I go get it, give it to him and then the um, customer puts it in their own bag to take home. So yeah week one of veggie baskets is done. Everybody seemed happy um, and yeah one done nine more to go. Thanks guys for watching. All right, so it is Wednesday the 21st. It's about 7 p.m. And we have some guests staying over in the Airbnb. And those guests are fans of our Wyoming life, or at least one of them is a really big fan. And it's his birthday today, so we're gonna sneak over there and we're gonna wish him a happy birthday today here on the vlog. his mom when they came over to the farm store this morning that I might be able to make it over about this time so that they could have a little a little birthday party for him so and I can make a quick appearance Aaron does have dinner ready for me so I do have to make this kind of fast but we're gonna see how excited we can get him hey Henry oh, oh, here you go. hey there you are hi hi happy birthday uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> is it is it okay if I put you on in the vlog this weekend? Yeah. And it's your birthday. Now, how old are you? Turning ten. Turning ten? Oh my gosh! And what are you going to accomplish when you're ten years old? You don't know. How about this? Raise cattle and eat beef. That sounds great. Very cool. Silly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hang on, guys. <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun. And now we're going to run across the road and get something to eat. Hi, guys. Bye. Happy birthday. Thank you. See you next time. All right, so it's Thursday. I don't know the date anymore. I lost track of that. 20, it's July. 20 something. Something. Um, so we are working on the the water trailer. Um, so far, we're boosting our output because making trips down there 14 times a day is not gonna be that much fun. So we're basically big borrowing and stealing every tank that we can find on the ranch and putting it on this trailer in order to uh, haul more water down there, fill up more tanks, and hopefully not have to make two or three trips a day. We might still have to make two trips a day, but two is better than three or four or five. So let me give you the tour. This 
is a 125 gallon tank. It's a baby, but it's gonna help out. We're actually in the process of putting a new valve on it and a new uh, connector on the end of it for a quick connect. This is our 2,000 gallon tank. It's actually 2,154 gallons if it's filled completely to the top. And then back here, we've got another tank and this one is 200 and what? How many gallons is this tank? I don't remember, 200, 425 gallons is this tank. So all told, all together, we have some number of gallons. Around 2,700. 2,700 <laughs> gallons. And uh, that will help us to be able to fill up as many tanks as we can when we go down. So I'll take you with me. We'll go down, we'll check the tanks and see what they look like here in just a minute. Alrighty guys, check that out. For those of you who are wondering if these stock tanks would actually work being placed out here, um, check this out. It's been a couple days since we put them out here, but here at sunset, the cows are hanging out by the black tank that I set. Um, most of the rust has actually came out and settled. So you can see that there's still a little bit, but it's all down there on the bottom. They've already drank this tank down quite a bit. Uh, we set another tank not too far away from it right here. And then we've got a few more, uh, I think two more tanks that are set a few hundred yards off that direction that we fill up as well. So that's why we're trying to get so much water in each trip on the fuel, or on the fuel truck, on the water truck. Um, the cows probably think I have cake, but this is impressive. Like all these cows are up here in this area of the field that probably without these water tanks being here, they probably wouldn't uh, be grazing in. So that's some pretty cool stuff. So good job, Mr. Tank. We'll be back to fill you up in the morning. Alrighty guys, see you tomorrow. Hey guys, welcome to Friday here on the ranch. It's been a pretty late back day. I actually went out this morning and got all my filming done with uh, with Lefty out there and, and taking a look at his, uh, his progress through the uh, castration process. Of course, Cole getting in on that video as well. I told you I had a Duluth shirt, uh, Duluth, Minnesota, actually from a subscriber. If you'd like to, uh, to throw your shirt in my way, and uh, and if you uh, you know you can always send it to this address right here, and we'll try to try to squeeze it into a video for you and, and get you a little bit of credit while we're at it. So uh, speaking of uh, subscribers and and fans uh, and their requests, not T-shirts but actual emails. Uh, last week during the vlog, I had a chance to sit down and talk a little bit about what we had going on with hay. And I got an email, actually quite a few emails from people that really like that, uh, having the candid moment and being able to sit down and talk about um, what's going on on the ranch, really um, kind of uh, really more of a behind the scenes type stuff as we, uh, as we struggle a little bit, but also talking about how we get through some of this kind of stuff. So um, this week, Obviously, we're still we're still dealing uh, with the hay situation. I'm still looking for hay. Um, I've been uh, getting quite a few emails from folks across the U.S. Um, who have solutions to the problems. Um, one of the big problems that we're having is finding somebody who has enough hay in bulk for us to just buy from them and be done and not have to worry about you know ten different uh, ten different suppliers. So I'm working on a deal, hopefully to uh, be able to get up to about 400 tons of hay in, uh, which is way more than we need. I don't actually need that much, and I probably won't buy that much. But one of the one of the problems that we have right now is actually getting uh, the money to be able to buy the hay. Normally you wouldn't have to buy hay until after you sell your cows, which means that you have a big influx of money there uh, when you sell your cows. Uh, if we have to buy hay earlier, obviously we're not gonna have that calf check uh, there in order to, to buy the hay. So what we're doing this year is we're actually working with our bank and trying to get what's called a line of credit, um, which I really, Aaron does all this stuff, so I'm probably gonna butcher this, but as, as, as I know it, um, they basically open an account for us, open a checking account. They put a predetermined amount of money in that checking account, whether it's $10,000 or $50,000 for hay or whatever we qualify for. And then, uh, then we're able to write checks out of that account to pay for hay as it comes in. And then once we're done buying hay, they close out the account, whatever was the amount that we, that we purchased, that's the amount that we have to pay back. Now it's not like a car loan. So if it's, let's say it is $50,000 in hay, um, 
if it's it, it has to be paid back pretty dang quick, and that's the difference between um, a line of credit and a uh, and a car loan. It's almost like an operating loan. It's like um, you have to pay this back, you know, with your CAF check, which would be coming up. Um, hopefully pretty dang quick. We're seeing a lot of producers in this area that are selling pears. Uh, that means that they're basically taking the cow and its mom and getting them off the ranch. It'd be like if we took, um, you know, blonde cow and her calf right now and took it out and, and sold both of them together as a, as a, as a group. Uh, another thing that we're seeing quite a bit of is people pulling the calves off the cows already and weaning, uh, which is, it's really early to be weaning. Um, but if you, you know, if you had calves that were born in, in March, it might not be. Um, and they're getting the calves off the moms and they're selling the moms as bread because they've been out with the bulls for the last month or maybe even two months. So they're coming in, they're break checking, they're making sure those uh, those cows are bred and then they're shipping them off to market as well and then holding on to the cows which hopefully they'll be able to sell. Calves eat less so hopefully you'd be able to be a little cheaper for you to, to keep. Um, we've actually uh, heard reports of ranchers selling their entire herds and getting rid of them completely. Um, I had one uh, email sent to me by a guy who said that his neighbor actually sold all of her steers so that she could buy hay for her horse. So definitely a, uh, an interest of priorities as, as this whole thing kind of keeps on happening. As for us, uh, what we're doing right now is we are looking for that hay. We're hoping to finalize that line of credit so we can start um, getting hay rolling in. If it has to come from farther away, obviously we may only get a load a week. So if we need, for example, 10 loads of hay, then, um, then we have to start getting and moving this way pretty darn quick, especially if we have to start feeding early. And that's the big what if right now that a lot of ranchers up in this area are dealing with. It's when we're gonna have to start feeding. We know we're gonna have to start feeding here before too long. The grass is drying up. No matter how much we move cows around with, with uh, water tanks or whatever other trick we're doing, um, the grass, it's, it's drying up. It's, it's turning into dust at this point. Um, we've had 10 days that have been up into the, up into the 90s, uh, into the high 90s, so and no rain. So it's really drying up fast, which means that we could end up haying or could end up uh, feeding hay uh, as soon as September. So it's really all kind of up in the air right now. We are not. We we know we're gonna have to feed hay. We know we have to get hay. We're not sure how many cows we need to get hay for, and that's something we're still trying to figure out: is how many cows we're gonna keep and how many cows we're gonna sell, how many we're gonna carry into next year, how many we're gonna calve next year. It might be really light calving season. We may only have. 50 cows to calves next year. So um, it's definitely an up and down. It's a roller coaster and we're all riding it. And I think that uh, having a, a day out of the week that where we can sit down and talk about this kind of stuff um, is beneficial. So thank you to whoever suggested that I do that in the uh, emails, the multitude of you. And uh, thank you for, uh, you know, wanting to be brought along because I think uh, a lot of this is your story as well. You guys have came along with us for a long way and uh, and I don't have any problem sharing with some of this stuff with you. So that's it uh, for today and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay guys, it's Saturday. Um, we spent a little bit of the morning out and uh, working in the garden uh, with Aaron. We were hauling out all the weeds out of the uh, asparagus and getting it all cleaned up. Came home to uh, grab a quick bite to eat and expecting to have lunch and that's not going to happen because, uh, what's going on Kenzie? A steer got out. A steer got out. Uh, Jeff is actually running water. We've been talking about that all week. He's uh, hauling water back to the to the cows and the calves, about 4,000 gallons per day. And uh, it's a little bit easier sometimes to leave this pipe gate up here open, but uh, today it looks like the steers found the pipe gate open and decided to come out on the highway. So we're heading up this way before the uh, sheriff's department shows up, and we're going to try to get uh, these steers back where they're supposed to be. It looks like there's more coming over than we have actually found uh, the deal. What they're doing is they're coming out from the pasture they're in, crossing over the cattle guard or getting around it somehow and then uh, getting into the ditch where the nice green grass is. Take a look. All right, we've got uh, obviously steers on the highway and we've got traffic coming by, which is not good. Um, it's oh, a heifer. That is a heifer that's out on the highway. We gotta get these guys pushed back in there and get that gate closed before something bad happens out here. Cars are slowing down, so that's a good thing. All right. 
having a little bit of a break here. We're gonna try to get her pushed back in. Hopefully, oh, there's only one out. Looks like uh, the other Faith, one's made their you. way back in. Come on, get back in there, number 52. Let's go, come on, girly. Come on, <laughs> come on, get back, cross the cattle guard. Come on, girl. Come on. I know you want to be out here and eating all this good food. Coming out to help me, Kenz? Yeah. All right, come on. Come on. You know where you came out. Get back in there. No? Hey. Dang it. Come on, girl. Come on. Ah, stupid cows. Let's see if we can't push them back down this way. Nope. Turn around. Go back the other way. Thank you, Kenzie. Ready, girly. Come on. I know. Come on. See if we can get her to jump back in there. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. I know. You're eating as fast as you can. Nope. Turn around. Go back up that way. Get back in there with your friends. Get back in there with your friends. Bad girl. Bad girl. Kenzie, good job. Can you close the gate for me? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. So this brings uh, up another thing as Kenzie gets his gate closed, is that the, they're actually able to walk this cattle guard, which is not good. So uh, I think one of our projects, we're gonna add it onto the project list, is to get these cattle guards out of here this summer, get them cleaned up and taken care of. And I'm gonna have to tell Jeff that he's gonna have to close the gate when he comes up to, when he comes up to, to haul out water. So he's hauling water right back here from the well which uh, sits right back where those cows are. So, bad heifers. They wanted to come out. I know, they all wanted to come out and say hi. Alrighty, good job. Thanks guys for hanging out with us for another week here on our weekly vlog. Uh, we'll see you on Tuesday with a brand new video from right here on the ranch. And thanks for watching our Wyoming life. Okay, so came back to the house after getting those guys put back in, thought, that everybody was back in. Went to have some lunch, look out the window again, and here's another one out. So we're gonna head back up that way and see what we can figure out. Oh, now there's two out. Same cow, see her over there. in this ditch and I'm not sure how the heck she's getting out. Come on, get back in there. Hey, bad cow. No, no, no. Turn around. Go. Get. No. Get back up there. Come on. Turn around. So check this out, the gate is closed again, but the only place that I can really think that she might be sneaking out is through this little tiny gap. It's the only thing I can think of um, for her sneaky little butt to get out. So we are gonna wedge something up in there.
All right, for right now, that's what I've come up with. I may end up coming up here with a panel just to cover that up, because that's the only place that I can think of that she's sneaking out, but who knows? Again, <laughs> hopefully this is the end, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Thanks, guys. Man, I keep on giving you guys these false endings, but uh, this is another false ending. Because here comes Jeff, right back there behind me in the truck. He's coming back from doing water, so I might as well open up the gate and uh, make sure that that no more steers sneak through here, or heifers. We're gonna go ahead and open up this gate for Jeff so that he doesn't have to stop on the other side of the highway and open it and then come running over, so. Here he comes. Now I'm really gonna leave you. I'm gonna close this gate. I'm gonna go get some lunch. And again, I'll see you on Tuesday on our Wyoming Life. Thanks guys. Again, really, thanks.